As the King of Illyria grew more and more into maturity, the realm seemed to settle around him. Pantaris had been conquered and the lands taken under him directly, growing his power even more, and cementing the Isle of Illyria as a strong and capable capital. With restored cities, the population of the island coast began to grow and grow, bringing more wealth, more people to work in the coasts, maintain the lands, and overall more prosperity. This quiet corner of Slaver's Bay had begun to grow more and more with life and wealth, to the point where, even without his dragon, King Rhaegos had to pawn one of the mightiest realms in Essos, not just in Slaver's Bay. Could it compare to the mighty cities of Atlantis, Bravos, or Marine? Well, perhaps not. But the now 35-year-old had come to call this place his own, and how Cinder was growing more and more in reputation. The dragons in the west grew older and more tired, while here in the east... Both seemed to be the prime subject on the cards. While the dragon pit had been constructed, the mighty dragon herself had left Illyria for a short time, flying through the smokes of Valyria as if they were calling to them. There had been some worry that such a beast may not return, but Majesty returned quite quickly, only to fly off again and return only a day or two later. Whatever they did in that time was unknown, but after the latter trip, Majesty retired to the now-built dragon pit, making a home of it, seeming to settle there deciding not to move further on from the place. For almost three months she lay there, while Rhaegar took care of the bustling cities and dealt with matters of state. He came to see her every few days, noting how she didn't seem sick, merely tired. There had always been uncertainties around Majesty's gender, for no one seemed to know how to tell a dragon's sex, and those that studied it seemed to notice that they changed sex as time went on. Perhaps in truth dragons didn't have genders, like humans. Rhaegar had always called Majesty a girl, for she had a quick mind and a kind soul, but his wife had insisted Majesty was a male, though swooping talons and aggression made it clear. Yet yeah, perhaps the question was answered, as after a few months, a warm, sickly ball of molten hot liquid was laying at the dragon pit. A nest. The dragon keepers investigating it, pulling from inside a singular egg, one that seemed to burn hot. It was orange in colour and seemed to glow with a warmth and life which brought much joy to the dragon keepers. It was presented before Rhaegar on the court with much joy, and Rhaegar took it into his hands, felt the shell, closed his eyes, and for a moment it felt as if he were stroking the side of majesty, keeping her calm. Yet there was something more to this feeling. There was an erratic, boiling feeling, almost like anger. Rhaegar removed his hand and thanked the dragon keepers asking them to keep the egg, the egg within a boiling pot to ensure it was warmed, as if it was still inside of the nest. The men bowed and did as such, leaving Rhaegar to sit alone upon his throne. That throne itself had been forged by Majesty. He'd imported gold from Marine and Yunkai, and had the mighty dragon melted into shape, burning the gold into a beautiful and strange throne, and then placed cushions upon it, for his own comfort, of course. In a way, all of the lands here had been forged by Majesty. It was her fires that burned the lords that came before, her fires that defeated Tolos and Mantaris. For her sake, he should give her some rest, especially now that an egg had been born to her. An egg. His mind immediately went to Marine, to Zogalare. He had not heard word of him for some time. Perhaps Zogalare had been right, and another man had come and taken his place, taken him down from the inside. Perhaps that meant his debt was over, the egg was his to keep, or perhaps some other fool from across the seas would try to claim it. Marine was a place where debts and coins were as valuable as anything else. Rhaegar would not think of it. All that mattered to him was that Majesty was safe, and that she had borne her young, an egg, to keep safe and preserved. That soothed him. That was when he noticed there was a smile upon his wife's face. Usually when she smiled, it was from some liquor, but this time, there was a genuine warmness as she approached. My love, she smiled, placing her hand upon her belly. I have news for you. Hello guys, and welcome to Crusader Kings 2, A Game of Thrones, where we are playing once more as King Rhaegar of Illyria. Now 35 years old, uh, establishing a pretty strong foothold 
in this region with the uh, slaver cities to our side and the uninhabited ruined lands to our um, east. No, that's west. One mind about that's west. This is east. Uh, and which path we take is going to be the interesting one because we we've got a lot of. Why can I not recruit? Oh, because it was been, it's been the last three years. Okay, we've got a lot of uh, lands we could um, build in here, but the problem is of how expensive all of this is. It'll be about fifty thousand to fully col uh, colonize all of this, and these lands do have the wealth to make that happen. But are we going to be foolish enough to go for them? Now, if you remember last episode, we made a deal with um, the former Great Master of Marine, but he's dead. And then his, this new guy was elected of House Mohredznak. So maybe his death may allow us to get away with it because Majesty has lain an egg. Uh, in fact, we'll, we'll start and it'll be moved to my treasury, I believe. Yes, Majesty has lain her egg. But um, Majesty is, is technically male, but dragons don't actually have gender. Spoiler alert. Dragons don't have gender. But... Um, this egg, oh, she's a shit fighter. Good to know. Um, I'm sure Marine may still cover for it, so we will have to at least be thoughtful about that. I've given them a claim on it, so we'll see if they do anything with it. Let's try and get a. Oh, fate smiles upon me. My wife is pregnant. A pilgrim who would just arrive. We'll, we'll, we'll recruit the pilgrim as my court position. Very good, actually. Very good at his job. Uh, let's dedicate a feast to her. I know that she's a drunkard, so this may not be smart to put her at a feast, but I don't want her to, to, to stress much. Especially if she's still jumbling her words. I mean, she's still young. Obviously, her stats has never got much better, but she's still young. And from me, this child could get either attractive or quick. I'd hope they get both, but uh, I believe um, Vicenia only got quick. And it's still club-footed. Oh no, she, she did get both, but she's club-footed. Uh, let's get some rest. If this one is a daughter, then it will be my, my second in line after we change the succession laws. And uh, Vic uh, Vicenia would still be first in line. If it's a boy, of course, then he'd be first in line. I'm not sure where, because these each cost a thousand each. So the chances of us getting any of these fully, or oh, and it's winter as well, so that's not good, but the chance of us getting any of these fully colonized, it's going to take a long time. It's going to take a long time and a lot of gold. <laughs> if you guys have good suggestions on how we can get that gold, if you've got like ideas about the best way of earning gold, I would like to know because. Um. I think just is better, but obviously it's probably going to be kind anyway. In in general, I would prefer like to. I, I, no, in general, I don't know a significant thing about CK2. I love the game, but there's a lot of stuff I don't know, and I would prefer to know it if I could. So, if possible, if there is knowledge you have about best the good ways I can earn some some income to help pay off a lot of the um colonizing we're going to be doing because even these islands here are going to need to be colonized it is a sun Makar, um Aelor, Einar, Makar, Vekar, Megan, Vagran, Hagen, Vagan, Valerian, Balerian, Valix, Aelor, Vagan, Valus. Let's go with Aemond. I was looking for the one that was like the most tar, because obviously Mag Magor and Make are, are Targaryen. But I wanted like an I like an A ah name. Like Aegon, Aemon, Aemond. Even Damon, even though that's a D sound, but still. Don't question it. Is the makings of a second Magor? Who is she? She's arrived in my court. She's not great stats, but she is attractive and she is 
Valyrian. So yeah, she can stay at my court. Oh, it's her education. Um, seems like learning's going to be best for her. And because she's a bass, it'll just give you a base level. Won't cost her any uh, learning, but won't gain any either. Apparently there's a plane flying over by the sounds of it. Or four planes about to dive bomb everything. One of the two. Let's get morale of armies up. I imagine... Yeah, Visenya's going to have her education focus in a year. I'm going to try and resist my urges. Because Lustful just has those... Honestly, it's, at least in this game, they're like every couple years. In CK3, if you have Lustful, you get that event like every single time you leave your house. Oh, my Band of the King died. I really have no one better. Okay. Ooh, we'll pick him then. That's my province. Improved holding is what you use when you've um, when you're colonizing. So we won't use that for now. But literally wise we're up to 17k, but we have a max of 26k, which is why we've got the troops uh, in here. Education focus for her. Um We'll pay we'll pay a decent bit of gold, get get her at least some learning. I'll hopefully save the full amount for uh, Aemond. Obviously, we've got enough time before Eamon's going to come of age. Um, what would it best I teach him? I'm not good at stewardship right now. I'm not the best. It'd either be diplomacy or martial, and I think we'll go for martial. Give him... Struggle. But he has both of my bloodlines, because I have two bloodlines now. One from forming a kingdom, one from uh, hatching a dragon. I'm sure when I form an empire, I'll get another bloodline for that as well. And then also I could like marry into the Targ bloodlines if I want even more. But honestly, I bloodlines are a thing I very much enjoy. I, I think bloodlines add a lot of fun. And she's only in my ward because I've like kidnapped her, right? But the 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 legends that they've done in the new I was lucky this to say this, but oh no, it's it's she, huh? How are you even getting up there? How are you m sleeping with the mount with mounted and veil? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's speak with my wife about this because this is absurd if it's true. Jonas is married to ask his spells to investigate. Sure. Do you fancy me for? She promised to look into it. If to found the Empire, it would take a lot. I basically would just need three kingdom titles, which is a lot. But I actually wouldn't need to do any, any direct expansion for it, would be the thing. Because realistically, there are three kingdoms here. I believe there's actually one kingdom here. One kingdom here, and then one kingdom here. And also, if I had these anywhere, I could form the the Empire of Illyria, which would be um, an awesome title to have, King of Illyria. Is there any could I upgrade Castle Town for an extra fifty tax income? Oh, no, no, sorry, it would increase it by two. I don't want to spend that much money, though, is the problem, because I'm going to do it for now, just because obviously I feel like in the long term the rewards would be good. I'll do it in both of these, so it's going to set me down to basically nothing, but... Sorry, wait, what? I took a loan from you? No, I don't remember taking a loan from you. You could fuck off. If you think I took a loan from you, I'm sorry I didn't. And also, if you try and take it from me, I will burn you with a dragon. Oh, which one to pick? If you either gains a trait or she loses a trait. This this horrid trait that gives you makes you better at everything. Hmm. 
If she's, she's turning out to be a very good kid, even if she is a bastard, I'll definitely keep her in court. The twists and turns of uh, Tisha's tongue, and a white lie she uses when making friends. This is, this is one of my courtiers, so I don't especially care. I'm, I am his educator, good. It's a weird hairstyle. I wonder what that's going to grow into. I pay him gold. You can marry this random woman that I... They keep acting like I should be educating. We received word at Drag that Vega, owned by Queen Visenya Targaryen, has died in last refuge. Apparently, she just one day fell asleep and never woke. Now, Vega is dead. Only 76 years old. Meraxes and the Zalagon. This is the one that we sort of got or I think like right at the end of last session, if I'm correct. Yes, that is uh That's what I say is in the in the course of Anis, but no, Anis has just lost it, and now it's No, it's, so it's in it's in Dragonstone with Hagen. But That is a bit weird. Oh so yeah, it was Anis who had it, but Anis has died. God, what a ho the horrid life he lived. Only 18 and already lost his nose, lost everything. But yeah, he was he was the rider of that dragon, so now she's probably just... Oh, I'd love a pet cat. Ripper Tiger. Oh, tiger. But yeah, that dragon's probably just now hiding in Illyria, waiting for someone, or uh, in Dragonstone. Wait for somebody to be of age to do something with it. Rough. Um, or there's a chance of her being temperate. I'd rather be temperate, if that's possible. It's just a, a significantly better trait. Let's see. 19k compared to 20k. But the thing is with them is that they would undoubtedly call in at least one of these uh, nations as um, a coalition, if not all of the surrounding ones as well. Could can go add in. Uh, geese. Like, they're combined, would just be way too many. Although, usually, you only get one or two joining a coalition, it could be a lot more. So, I'm not going to deal with any of them until I have an army large enough to cause an actual impact. Alios Angry Buster Room. Apparently, my beloved cat Tiger has killed his son's pet rabbit. Um, I can buy a new pet, put down my pet. Fuck off. Your fault if I want a rabbit rather than a cat. Cats are just significantly cooler. Let's obligate him. Stop joining schemes against me. Good. I hope there's no schemes against me. It's probably just factions against me. Cast Town's been built. I assume the one's about to be built here as well. What's our income at now? Plus 10. So we, 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 we are getting a really good income boost from doing this. I think this one's about to be done. Increases my court size as well, which is always good to have. A large court allows for a lot of uh, courtiers. And that takes our income up to 11. Wonderful. That would pay for itself in a like two years. A hundred something weeks. Not bad, actually. Your bastard daughter has started breaking the rules of the game she plays with the children. Apparently she thinks winning is more important than fair play. Give her honourable... I mean, Rufus is just a sick trait. 
If she wants to be ruthless, she can be ruthless. Um, I'm in fact having Roth. She's not one of my kids. She's just one of my Valyrian courtiers. I'm sure we'll grow up and we'll be pretty good. She's still in her prison cell. I should probably just release her. Ooh, I don't want to gain Craven. She has a chance of getting brave. I don't think she got it though. I guess intrigue, isn't it? Yep. So, um release her from prison, sure. Just because I don't know why you were in prison in the first place. It must have been when I conquered uh, one of these three. I inherited one of the lordships. So it was which one? This one? It's this one back here. So I can either take it myself, can give it to Nailira. So it's between Nailira, Veira, and me. Does he not have any males? Dear God, what happened to her? Hair lip, club footed, jeez. She has children of that same line. Um. Just give it to his widow. Yeah, why not? Because, I mean, when she dies, it goes back to his line anyway, right? It's fine. Oh, a new dragon rider. So, Zalagon is no longer being driven by the Targaryens, but by a Celtigar. Ooh. Well, we are a fan of Celtigars, so... <laughs> This is just this just some random Celtigar in the bloody fingers. <laughs> but hey, she's got Valyrian blood. I'm impressed for her for even trying, honestly. The Targaryens will probably be angry. They say Vazano now rides Valyrian into battle. As in Balerion the Black Dread. Is this like fucking Hugh the Hammer, just some random dude gets Balerion? That's what I was about to say, surely, yeah, so Aegon died. Because there's no way Aegon would let it go. So he died not when he had his 18 year old son, but when he had his 50 year old son. Still has a 2 year old daughter as well, but. Oof. Did either of his wife still live? What on earth? Visenya rules one random island in the Stepstones. And then obviously Oris is chilling out. Quicksilver. So an 18-year-old dragon is now being ridden by... Some random dude. This just sort of happens where you'll just get random dudes just somehow learning to ride each other. There's still two dragons in the Vale. And there's no dragons in King's Landing anymore. Yeah, there's no dragons in King's Landing. It's only, um... Oh no, her dragon fucking died, so it doesn't even matter. Do I own this debt too? No. Fuck off. I'm not paying you debt. And call a great council. Oh, so it's if your succession's unclear. That's cool. I really don't know why she's ruling from here, but... That fact that all of those dragons are already gone. Like, imagine Game of Thrones, but the Targaryens lose all of their dragons in a year. That's what we have here. So they lost all of their dragons already, but I still have mine. So realistically, who should be the king? You know, that's what I'm saying. I see the dragons. There's no untamed dragons. Meraxes is the only wild dragon. 
and was obviously very upset after Vagar died. Terax was their grandparent, and Beleriand was their parent. So she's she's the only one still within the Red Keep. The rest is, yeah, any anywhere but there, basically. And I have the only dragon egg. Beleriand hasn't laid dragon eggs. Oh no. This this is kind of a thing where we're just gonna eventually see a slow death of the dragons because for whatever reason they just don't lay eggs and then die super soon. I may I may help the Targ out the Targaryens out a little bit by giving them an egg or two. I think it's fair to give them an egg or two, just so that they can at least keep the dragons. Because I don't want to be the only one with dragons, because I'm the only one with a human brain to know that you should have dragon pits and the like. <laughs> She's grown up to be a very, very smart woman. Eamon is kind of just a kid. Nothing wrong with that, but you know, n nothing special about him. But yeah, I may, get, may give them an egg or two just so it's more of a, a challenge, because I don't want to be the only one with a dragon. Then I'll be like Daenerys, and that's... I mean, I'd like to be Daenerys. I'd like to just dominate everything through sheer dragon power, but <laughs> it's not very logical. Um, pay him gold. I'm not going to give him land. You can have a favor. Okay, well. What a, re what a reaction. Okay, well. Four hundred gold. Should I be spending it again? There's nothing much I could spend it on other than troops, which I don't exactly need yet. And... You know what? I'll get defenses. Just so I can be a bit more secure. Basic defenses. She's an expert scientist. Wonderful. Let's get basic defenses in all of these. In all of my lands. Especially since they're also all the coastal lands. Get basic defenses there, and then I'm gonna start saving up. To see if we can... I'm not sure which I'd go for first. Maybe this one here. Pay a dr visit on Dragonback. Winter's coming. A city of no man's land. Why? What's going on here? Are they raiders? What are they fighting in the Black Cliffs? I assume it's against one of my cities or something. Or maybe it's just the battle happened here for some reason. King or Agar could get stressed or I could get diligent. I'm not going to take it easy. Oh, we got lucky, we got diligent. Look at that, a great trait. 40 years old and he's just getting wiser and wiser. Visenya, my, my daughter, has become a brilliant steward. That is fantastic. I don't really want to marry her out because I would rather keep her here. Because she's still second in line to the throne. Let's arrange by culture. Look at the Valyrians again. Are there any... They are all super young. He's ruthless, diligent, craven, patient, but charismatic negotiator. And he's in the saucy Valyrian. You seem like the best pick. 
and it will be matrilineal, so it will cost prestige, but I'd rather get her married off matrilineally and keep her second in line. Aemon, obviously, will have a bit more freedom on who he marries, because he could marry anyone, because it would be a patrick marriage. The Fraki Horse Lord has launched a raid on our lands, buddy. I don't think you want to do that, honestly. Do I just need to only raise them here, I think? Yep. Me leading it. Let's see how the Horse Lords do. Oh, what a surprise, they mutually start running. But running into Valyria, I don't know if that's a wise idea. I'm starting to think that Princess Visenya might fancy me, my daughter. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> We're going for a true Targaryen roleplay here, boys. I own barely anything when this army's up, though. Where on earth did the Dothraki run to? You know, I'm gonna take. Let's take these troops back down, and when they show up again, I'll raise them. We'll chase them if we have to. Especially since we've got basic defences and all of these now, so we should be pretty pretty secure. God, we, we really are turning into a proper Valyrian, aren't we? God. She's not pregnant, though, so maybe, maybe we're fine. If she would be, it'll be a very pure-blooded kid, let's put it that way. Where's he got his armies up? Is he in battle? Oh no, it's just the, the Dothraki as well. Whose prison is she in? Her husband. What a loving relationship. <laughs> Who? Why am I educating her? You get the fucking basics. Why are you costing me gold? It looks like they're Dothraki. I think they may have just fucking died in Melior Pass. Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> so my daughter got quick, meaning she's incredible, and my son gets paranoid. This is fun for the roleplay, though. I love having a kid who's a little bit fucking bonkers. <laughs> Already paranoid. I mean, it's not like Rhaegar's claim with what he's just done with his daughter, so... Ooh, what's happening here? What's happening to Yunkai? Slave raid, and they're defending against a civil war. Um, sure. Let's, let's get the prosperity up. If I get the prosperity in all of these up, that'd be perfect. But yeah, these are these two are a trade route, I believe. Yeah, the Black Cliffs are not. Where does this trade route actually go from? So it's just a Valyrian trade route, basically. Yes, it is. Okay. Makes sense. I'm sure that there still would be parts of that trade route, even after Valyria fell, and it's good to have it for when you build back up Valyria. She's now known as Dry... My... <laughs> what is her nickname? Queen Helena Dryfroat. That is... Let's see. I can declare war on the mace... He would give me 100 gold, sure. How many troops are we looking at on this side? So 6k, 6k against 4k. I may not even need to get involved. I'll just, I'll just take the gold, thank you. You don't know what we will raise. Let's raise these armies. Let's get our generals on it. And let's head off to Yonkei. Give it a bit of dragon fire. This is a good... If we can weaken 
these regions, Marine will be a lot more isolated, because Marine is the obvious next target for us, if we do want to expand. And it's a very, very rich expansion route as well. Like, Marine is, is one of the richest of the three cities. Like, they're getting 12 a month. Obviously, Young Guy's not earning anything right now, probably. And Astroport is... 9 a month. Or no, 12 a month when they are, don't have raised troops. So, whose army is this? It's that army. It's okay. So, the, I'm at, the actual people who called me in was the high city of Tarosh. I thought it was like one of these guys, but no, it's Tarosh. And now you guys are just sending troops through my land. I, I assume probably because the AI is thinking, you know what we should do, lads? We should go siege. Tarosh. Oh, they're going to stand in ruins and probably die of attrition. And Astropol's also at war with them. So this is just every single person's at war with the young guy. Don't know what he did to get every single person to go to war with him, but... <laughs> Clearly not the most liked person. Okay, so he's won... It looks like he's won his civil war. It's not going to change the fact he doesn't have any troops. Where's Tarosh going? But I'll do anything for money. <laughs> you want me to burn down some random dude across the sea from you? Sure, why not? I pick that. Is that in here? Um, you hate me, but fine. You can be an advisor. Maybe make you hate me less. I don't know where Tarosh is. Why are they hanging out in the black cliffs? They're sieging my trade fort. Am I is is does the trade port belong to them for some reason? Would they be sieging my trade port? I don't exactly get that. I've sieged their capital a bit. And then they just got 6k hanging out in these ruins. Wait, they're sieging just there's a trade port in Melior March, these ruins they're sieging. Who is living there? Who's living there and why are they so determined to go for trade ports? Because oh, it's it, I, it, and so an embargo war makes sense. He's taking out the ports which are loyal to him, but why are these ruins got trade ports which are loyal? Oh, an Astropor is falling. It's against Marine. Wow. Marine's doing some damage. Um. Tarosh finally coming in to do something. Let's deploy a dragon in this siege. The guys. Maimed? Oh my god. Severely injured and can no longer fly. I hope that's a temporary trait. Dear god, how on earth did Yunkai severely maim Majesty? Because I don't even know if that's a temporary thing. It's also... Okay, yeah, it is a temporary trait. But that marshal is just not increasing by much. So still wounded, so it's gone down to wounded. So when they're no longer wounded, it will be... 26? Yeah, take his house into a family arrest. And now I'm going to start returning back to Tolos, because I've done my bit in this war, and I wanted to set my sights on Marine. We've still got 19k. We've got 30k, but it's how expensive it would be to bring up the army. Like, I'm earning only 3 gold with 7k up. So if I've got 30k up, like, 
the expenses of that are going to be a lot. News from Claw are your grace. A new dragon has entered the world. Lord Maloth Kelsegar has successfully hatched one. The she-dragon uh, Hegagon. That's impressive. Okay, so the Targaryens don't have one, but the Keltigars do now have a dragon. That's wonderful. So do I have to give the egg to my son? I'm, I'm in order for him to hatch it. Yes. Yes, it's it's it's, it's just as is now in the tradition. I like that because it's the first time I've done it. God, they're just actually gonna unseage all of this and win because Tarosh is literally not here. Let's just get a white piece. I can't be bothered to keep going to war with them. The dove. I do like the dove, it's just a, it's a sweet name for her. Astropor has literally been split in two. Wow. This guy must be so hated that he everything he's done has just led to Astropor falling apart. In a way, that's impressive. So she's a loyalist because I've given her lands and then he probably hates me. Yeah. That makes sense. And his base stats aren't that bad, so. An old man with a map. This is the Valyrian steel thing. I'd, I, I'm gonna undo the Valyrian steel. Because I somebody has reminded me of how much I hate the Valyrian steel questline. So let's go for have five kids, because it will give me fertility boost. The thing with the Valyrian Steel questline is it just isn't good roleplay because it's just a memory game where you have a chance of dying every time and then there's that room where you have to pick the correct dove, swan, bird thing and then you get Valyrian Steel and then every time they do a test to see if they like you or if they'll fight you for it. It's, it's, it's a bit too repetitive. Is this army just going to be trapped on my capital? Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> it is going to be my kid. <laughs> oh, no. Look, the lustful trade just is too strong. I'm dishonorable. According to you. Well, that's going to be certainly a secret that we're going to try and keep hidden. I'm viewed with respect. That's good. Why do I have five demands? Why do I gain the next real... Oh. Okay, he's back to full strength. Let's... How do I... It's... Okay, so I can't create a new vessel. Let's instead... Maybe I give it to Visenya? No, no, I can't because I can't uh, land women. Yeah, she can't hold it. Obviously, he could hold it. I could give him painted valleys, but I don't see. It's I don't see a point in having like my own Dragonstone. Where God, they're gonna slowly treat to death. I think. I don't see a point in having my own Dragonstone where I just. Uh, place my son, especially since he's still very young. I'd rather have him here so I can. Train him. I have a friend called Malimar. Does he have no, he's and he's too old as well. Let's have a look at my my court because my court is near full. He's a Lyrian, Havar. Hmm. I don't know who would be best. So yeah, these, these used to be one of the families of Illyria. And I think I want to give it to them though. Is there one in my council who actually deserves it? Not sure. 
we'll give you painted valleys just so I can think of what to do with it later. You can have it for now. Earning a lot of gold. Soon we can start looking at taking one of these lands. That's good thing I didn't give it to him because he's already dead. So the question is going to be, where do I start? Do I want to take uh, up here in Angregoria, or do I want to start immediately working my way down uh, towards Illyria, or do I want to start with these isles? It will get me right next to Astropor, which could be a good... Like, it may be smart to start with these isles, so I can take all of this, but personally, I think it's probably smartest to take here and slowly work our way down towards taking all of that coastline. It's, it's a toughie. It's a toughie, and there's a lot of gold. I have to. People keep demanding money from me. Why can't I just keep my money? I like money. A son was born to my son-in-law. Ah, oh, yes, this kid who is totally not mine. Stay him after me. Oh, he, di he died stillborn. I guess in a way that resolves that. It's, it's probably going to be very sad though for Visenya. Oh, she's got fatigue as well. Damn. Oof. Lots of problem in this in the household at the moment. But we still hold our strength and our wealth. And perhaps it's time we start looking towards all of these lands and thinking, what do we do with them? What do we do? Do we take strike a marine or do we just save up our money and start colonizing? I want to thank you guys for all of your support so far. I want to thank uh, the Patreons who have, uh, who of course will also be the first ones to see this. So if you're seeing this and you're a Patreon, thank you, Patreon. And uh, if you are on a Patreon and you're watching this on YouTube, the next episode's already up. You can go watch that video and boom, episode four is going to be up for you. I hope you guys have enjoyed I'm enjoying making this series, even if CK2 is a little bit of a Ugh! at times, you know. <laughs> I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this as much as I have. And if you have, please do leave a comment. Let me know what your thoughts. Let me know what you want to see how Cinder do next. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you soon. Until next. Ugh! Until next time. <laughs>